morning, good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, it's a little bit about me. Uh, let's move on though and talk to the agenda. I'm going to speak just a little bit about the research we do at Price. Uh, I think anybody that knows Price um, maybe doesn't know so much about our research groups. So I want to make sure you do uh, get a flavor for what our folks do in the research uh, area of, of the company. <clears throat> talk about the survey, a little bit of background into the survey. Uh, of course, the results and analysis. I'm not going to be presenting all the, re <clears throat> excuse me, all the results, just um, the highlights today. We will have a report that'll be distributed to anyone who took the survey. Uh, that'll go out uh, within a few days, and then um, a chance for the audience to ask some questions and hopefully get some answers, and then we'll wrap it up. First, a little bit about the research team at Price. Uh, we've been doing research since we started the business in 75. Actually, we could probably make the case that the business became a business because of the research that was done prior to 1975. Uh, but we continually collect and analyze data uh, to try to provide ourselves and our customers uh, the best possible information um, that's available for doing cost estimating. Um, our research group is led by our chief scientist, Arlene Minkavich. Some of you may know Arlene. She's been with Price uh, for quite a while, probably 30 years or more. Um, all total, we have over 200 years of, of combined cost estimating experience within the team. Uh, educational Education majors are, are things you would expect from a research group, mathematics, a lot of STEM, right? Science, technology, engineering, manufacturing experience. Um, a lot of our our research uh, is conducted by folks who have, actually have firsthand expertise as um, in, the, in the areas of hardware, software, and services. In other words, folks who, who've actually faced the problems that um, as all the estimators do face. They're, they're, they are folks who aren't academically trained. They are trained in the school of hard knocks. Um, so our learning, what we try to do is we, we look at our research as an ongoing thing. We never consider it to be finished. We try to share the information uh, with our customers and the industry uh, in total. Uh, we try to share it so that folks will be encouraged to share with us so that we can make our findings uh, more useful, more valuable to, to the folks we deal with. Uh, we truly do believe our work is, is never done. We don't look at our our research products is anything more than a, a snapshot at a point in time that is always um, something that can be improved upon. So now about the survey. Um, over about a seven, six, seven week period this fall, we, we conducted this survey. We put the survey up, encouraged folks to, um, to respond to it. It was attempting to, uh, gauge the health or the view of the health of the estimation within the, um, the government uh, bidding uh, industries, uh, specifically, more specifically, the, the aerospace and defense uh, part of the government um, contract uh, vying businesses. So we use a, a comprehensive 52 question survey format over six different dimensions to deal with estimation. Most of the questions uh, were ones which are reflective of the philosophies trying to be pr promulgated by DOD in more data-driven estimating. Um, most of the participants, over, over 85% of them, are actually the manufacturers or the A&D companies that are responding to proposals from the government. Um, a smaller portion, around 15%, are those folks who are consultants mostly who are working on contract to the, the big aerospace and defense companies in preparing the proposals. Uh, no one, although we did have um, surveys completed by folks that work for the government, none of those surveys are part of the results that I'm going to show you today, and they're also not part of the, um, of the report that will follow. Uh, that's another activity, another survey to look at at, at the state or the viewed state of affairs with regard to estimation on the receiving end of proposals as opposed to the preparing end. But that's a whole separate topic, not what we're going to talk about today. So that while we received some surveys completed by folks working 
in the government or for the government, none of those are part of what we'll talk about today. So let's get into some of the key outcomes. Again, these are just uh, highlights. There's a, you know, the, the 52 questions that were part of the survey are covered in detail, as well as um, what the responses are. So anyone who's getting the report will see those. Um, but some key outcomes that I think might be of interest to everyone, that um, right now folks are pretty satisfied, or their view is that the company is pretty satisfied with regard to the quality of the estimates that are being prepared uh, in, in responding to RFPs. Um, now this is where you know, an, an, a, a, an opinion is expressed. The answers to the questions were either I agree strongly, I agree somewhat, I disagree strongly, disagree somewhat, or I don't agree or disagree. So where opinion isn't expressed, that means you know, they, they don't agree or disagree. So where folks, you, did state that they agreed or disagreed by two to one. They say they believe their current estimating process is producing uh, good estimates, high quality estimates. Um, as I mentioned, the, it's also possible for an answer to be no opinion or I don't agree or disagree. Um, so I look at that and uh, that's possibly an area for concern because the incidence of that is, is rather high in some cases. Uh, in the box here, you see the cases where uh, the questions turned out to be no opinion uh, more often than, than it was in other questions. And, and they primarily deal with the accuracy and understanding of the technical and the reliability of the data uh, for estimation. They also deal with the uh, practices that are employed in what I'll call strategic decision making in terms of um, how the RFP is going to be handled within the organization. Um, also, the last bullet shows that there's a, there's, there's a lot of uh, lack of understanding or lack of agreement in terms of whether or not organizations agree or approve or, or disapprove of commercial estimating tools. Now, a lot of these reasons for no opinion could be very innocent. It could be a case of folks just not, you know, wanting to answer the question, uh, just wanting to see the report. So they felt the question was too hard to answer. I'm going to skip by that answer the things that I think I can answer quickly just so I can get the report. That's a possibility. But there also may be um, reasons for not answering that are a concern, such as there's a lack of a process that's either articulated, defined, or understood by the folks answering the questions. That's a bigger issue. Um, so I think that's uh, you know one of the reasons why we want to keep this survey alive for an indefinite period of time and come back and review the results on a periodic basis and update uh, the report that um, is the basis for what I'm presenting today. Uh, some key outcomes to continue. Uh, organizations, as I say, they do believe they're producing quality estimates more often than they are not, uh, but they do all feel that, for the most part, that the process is unduly uh, time consuming. Um, and that, uh, you know, it's most of the work that is prepared that winds up being embedded in a proposal is being done by just a few participants who could, who, who are well seasoned and could be very near, uh, very near retirement and likely could be a good possibility it's the last proposal they'll ever work. Um, they also recognize that institutionalizing knowledge, that is the data that's available uh, through data mining and analysis, that's viewed as a process that's an improvement worth undertaking. I'll speak more to that in the end. So we had six dimensions, um, 52 questions, as I say, six dimensions. The first one is the people dimension, and the key highlights from from the people uh, questions were that uh, by four to one, people believe that there's a core group of subject matter experts who are nearing retirement, who are responsible for the content of, of, of the proposals. Um, also believe by a factor of five to one, that the time is the largest obstacle to the people doing the estimate. Critical dimension number two is process. Uh, that's the estimation process. And here we see that, you know, by 12 to one, people call the, the process excessive in terms of the amount of time 
it takes to do it, um, unduly uh, time consuming. Not, so it's certainly a time consuming process to prepare a proposal. No one, I don't think anybody would, would, would argue that. But uh, by 12 to 1, folks feel it's unduly long. In other words, there's a suggestion that the process doesn't have to be as painful as it is. Um, and that's further, um, that's further uh, buoyed by the three to one who believe that the process is inefficient. Um, also, folks find that the, the approval process for, for management and, and, this, and the subsequent analyses that they may require to make decisions is negatively impacting the estimates. Critical dimension number three is technology and key findings from the survey on technology is that um, folks believe uh, quite heavily that their organizations are, are using um, tools that are developed internally, most of them in Microsoft Excel, and uh, probably by subject matter experts, subject matter experts who are maintaining and using the tools, um, that they're heavily used in preparing bids and proposals. And they also feel that there's a high degree of confidence in the use of those homegrown tools, almost by the same amount uh, as the usage of the tools. Uh, data is critical item, critical dimension number four, and there's no implicit um, um, ranking in terms of whether these things are presented one, two, three, or four. They're all critical elements. None are more important than other. However, data <laughs> continues to be an area that's viewed as, as uh, probably the weakest link in the estimation chain. Um, the lack of accessible, accessibility of the data, the lack of consistency of the technical data was specifically cited. Folks also find that there's misalignment between technical and cost data. In other words, you may have technical data at the component level, but not the cost data at the component level. And that makes it very difficult to use the, under, the data, and it also um, leads to misunderstanding of what the data is trying to tell us. And folks do by twice, twice as many as, as don't feel that unreliable technical data and lack of accessibility and understanding of costs and historical information are big problems. Crit critical um, dimensions five and six are lumped together. That's culture and stakeholders. Uh, by two to one, folks feel that executive management do demonstrate a high degree of confidence in organizational estimate qualities. Um, but that confidence, confidence does not translate into lowering bid amounts to improve win rate. What they do see, what folks do see is improving the win rate is better use of historical data, better integration of historical data through um, analytics into a, uh, a more robust estimating uh, process. So I guess what they're saying is, yeah, our management free confidence with, with the estimates that are coming out, uh, but they're not lowering bids because of it. And so it's not bid low to, to increase win rate, it's bid more credibly to improve win rate. And I think that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good thing to conclude. So that's really the, uh, the extent of what we found. Now I should tell you that the, um, the survey, uh, as I said, it was done in about a six, seven week pr uh, time frame. It's since that time, we've had 20 to 30 additional folks take the survey. None of those results have been incorporated in what I'm showing you now, and none of that will be part of the uh, report that we're going to be issuing. Um, if you wanna get the report and you haven't completed the survey, then what you need to do is complete the survey. We're gonna give you a link in a minute that shows you um, where the survey can be found. And please complete it. That will put you on the distribution list for the report that we'll be publishing. Again, it won't include your results. It won't include the results of the most recent 20 to 30 responses that we have, but you will get that report. Now, why do we keep asking for responses if they're not gonna be put into the report? Because we're gonna refresh the report. Our plan is to refresh it um, every, probably every year, if not more frequently. We may change the questions based on the feedback we get as well. Uh, to make them either more understandable 
or to replace ones which are not viewed as irrelevant, or which are viewed as irrelevant, excuse me, with ones which are viewed as more relevant. Because the one thing we've found um, in the data that we've collected so far is that some things just haven't changed much over the past 30 years. Data is still the weakest link, for example. Preparing proposals still continues to be an extreme time consumer. And it seems, uh, in the opinion of the folks who completed the survey, that a few seasoned people seem to hold the keys to the kingdom. That's really been that way for at least 30 years, I'd say. But one thing has, has emerged that we didn't see too much of 30 years ago and we are seeing now, and that is recognition that serious costs in technical data analytics will improve the quality of estimates and win rate. Now, I use the word will improve, not can improve, because that's the statement that came back. Not that they can improve, but that they will improve win rate. So people believe by a large margin that conducting analytics, embedding the analytics into a process uh, of estimation will improve a company's win rate. So those things really uh, are probably the driving forces behind why we want to keep our eye on this and continue to collect opinions from folks and up this, update the survey on at least an annual basis. Okay, so that's it for me. And if we have any questions, I'll be happy to take them. I haven't seen any come in, um, so if anybody has a question and wants to raise their hand or, or pose it. What? Well, maybe you did too good, Bruce. <laughs> Hard to believe, but possibly. Well, then I guess um, you've got all your contact info up on the screen, and we're going to be sending up a follow, sending out a follow-up email to everyone that will have that information as well as the link here. So that should go out in about an hour. Um, you guys, you know, you're making it real easy to get a hold of you. So. There it is. Okay. Thank you, Bruce, for your Thank time you. today. Thanks for everybody joining us. Uh, got some extra time for for to get some lunch. Those of us on the East Coast, um, we're real happy to have everybody here and happy to have Price with us. Um, you guys are always really good to ICS. So, um, thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Price, and thank you, everybody. <laughs>